Yeah, and yeah, if you ever drive through Iowa, you're going to see a lot of corn and a lot of soybeans. So that makes sense as to why this is actually such a such a huge deal. And and, and like you mentioned, yeah, I remember when Joni Ernst was uh, running back in the day. I guess that would be six years ago now. And you know that was when Obama was in the White House. But yeah, she was running on this ridiculous message of uh, I'm a farmer's girl and I know how to castrate hogs. So that's just what I'll be doing in Washington and like this whole fake rural shtick. And uh, this is just such a moment of unmasking when you realize that actually she has no idea what the fuck she's talking yeah, about. Yeah, it was all an act. It was all an act. She's not a farmer. She's not of that world. You know, she's not of like the agrarian fold. She's an elitist, uh, you know, swamp monster like all of them. And and she's been one of the worst when it comes to spending, you know, in the face of coronavirus and the economic depression. She has not advocated for people to get more stimulus checks. You know, it, there have been some Republicans that have kind of stood out and be like, you know, maybe we should get some money in the hands of people. And uh, you know, maybe we shouldn't just lean into our uh, super far right libertarian economic instincts in this instance. But Joni Ernst has always been someone that's, uh, you know, been a super deficit hawk, you know, even in the face of a depression, let's not give people money and kind of a senator. So uh, if she gets destroyed in this election, which is likely then uh, or not likely, but at least possible. Then, uh, potentially. Yeah, I don't know about destroyed, but it's uh, definitely on the table that she loses. Yeah, I mean, I say destroyed because it wouldn't even be. Uh, you know, thinkable, I don't think, uh, six years ago, or I mean, in a normal election cycle, oh, uh, 100%. A Republican senator incumbent in Iowa, uh, with a Republican incumbent Repu uh, president on the ballot, it's almost unheard of. So the fact that this is possible is pretty crazy. And this is a moment which really, really illustrates just how out of touch she is and how tone deaf she is and, you know, why she's likely to lose her re-election. Greenfield, you asked. Well, first, what's the break-even price for a bushel of corn in Iowa this week? <laughs> well, a bushel of corn is going for about 368 today, 369 And break-even really just depends on the amount of debt someone has. I suspect there's farmers that are breaking even at that price. However, if their yields are down 50%, that's certainly not going to cover it for them. Uh, I'll tell you, we've had low commodity prices for too long. And they've been going out of business prices. Okay, just to put that down there, that was actually a really important thing that she just said. Uh, one thing that a lot of people don't uh, consider is the way that commodities are traded on the stock uh, market. Are, are the, the ba basically the the life li livelihood of uh, corn farmers and soybean farmers? Uh, they they hang in that balance, and uh, you know they also she also mentions you know how many farmers are strapped with debt. Um, you know these kinds of things really make a difference. That was a you know a really strong answer from. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's her name? Greenfield. Uh, I don't know her first name, the woman that's running, Yeah, I, I but either know. way. But yeah, uh, that's a good illustration of how much better her opponent is, at least as far as it, speaking the language of the actual community of Iowa. Yeah. Let's see how Ernst does. Soybeans in Iowa. You grew up on a farm. You should know this. Uh, I think you had asked about corn and I, it depends I on, I asked her corn. It depends on what the inputs are, but probably about five fifty. Well, you're a couple of dollars off, I think, here, because it's uh, ten oh five. So, we'll move on to something else. Uh, and I and and well, I don't think Miss Greenfield on. answered either. Uh, she actually did. <laughs> but the price of corn, we'd ask for the price of soybeans from you, Senator. You want to take another crack at it? <laughs> no, thank you. You said could the break even for corn is ten fifty. This I don't. Is, this is the really embarrassing part: is that she doesn't just own up and be like, "Oh shit, I guess I need to study up," which I mean would have been one thing, but she really tries to kind of like backtrack, yeah. and get better, and and kind of like throw her opponent under the bus and act like she also didn't answer it. She tries to like make it a wash instead of just coming clean, and it, I, I feel like that's really uh, you know part of the reason why this was such a bad look for her is because now they can replay this and just it shows how insecure she is and how obvious and out of touch she is, and uh, oh, it's just a really bad look. I almost thought she was going to try and pull up Nancy Pelosi and just like reboot and do the whole. Good morning. Good Sunday. morning. Hello. Sunday what was the morning. question you asked? Yeah. Beautiful morning. Happy to be here. Great. Right. Right. You have right there. Uh, yeah. So what were we talking about? The price of what? It's so funny how she was like, she was like, well, she didn't answer either, even though she actually answered immediately spot on. With a great answer. Yeah, it was like, yeah. what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, Joni Ernst, I saw an interview with her. Uh, I forget, I think it might have been The Hill. And she was just, she's totally scripted. She's totally a robot politician. She has no actual, um, you know, like personality or presence. It doesn't seem like she really wants to like connect to voters in any way. She's like, she's almost like, uh, 
just completely robotic and uh she's not a good actor anymore i mean maybe she was was able to uh pretend to be a farmer or whatever which is how she got into the senate in the first place but by now her mask is just totally slipped off and she's she's basically just running this terrible campaign which this interview or debate performance is indicative of it reminds me of susan collins who gave a similarly kind of stilted uh out of touch performance uh in a debate in maine against sarah gideon and lisa savage where it was just like oh you can just tell that after people have been in these circles for a while and after they're used to uh you know their echo chamber and used to you know fawning coverage from their lackeys that they, they don't really know how to respond as well to pressure anymore after being in that bubble for a while. Yeah, and I'm actually I'm looking at the Iowa State uh, RCP average right now. It, I apologize, I forgot her name. It was Teresa Greenfield. This is the uh, Democratic candidate running against uh, Joni Ernst, and she it looks like her RCP average is up about four point eight. Uh, so that's a pretty uh, sizable lead in a Senate uh, race in Iowa. It looks like uh, an outlier. It looks like back in uh, September she was showing plus twelve in one poll, which is freaking crazy. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, I, that really is wild. Like I said, given the fact that it's an incumbent senator uh, with an incumbent Republican on the ticket, that usually tends to help down ballot uh, Republicans in red states, which Iowa usually is pretty reliably. Uh, but this election season, you know, thanks to coronavirus and Trump's just utter, you know, failing to do anything proper in the last uh, six months in the lead up to this election, I think it's just really laid bare the Republican Party, especially with their refusal to get on board uh, with a, you know, s major stimulus to help the American people. Uh, I saw Mitch McConnell's, you know, he, he, he put out there like the Senate proposal for a stimulus package. It, it doesn't even include, uh, you know, a cash payment to Americans. So it's like they're basically offering a stimulus package without any stimulus in it. <laughs> stimulus for the corporations, Gavin. <laughs> of course. And uh, I think that it's, it's just electoral suicide. Uh, you know, or at least definitely running a very big risk to embrace that kind of conservative deficit hawkery in a time like this. And, you know, people in Iowa, regardless of if you give a fuck about soybeans or if you're a corn farmer or whatever, you you still need money. Uh, you still need food on your table and a cruel, uh, you know, senator like Joni Ernst, who doesn't even believe in uh, direct cash stimulus in a time like this is is not I, I can't. Imagine. Yeah, she's just running on outdated Tea Party politics still, and it's not working. 100 percent. Um, yeah. And uh, and even this is even more indicative of how unliked she is. I mean, Donald Trump is actually tied in, uh, the, in two of the most recent polls in Iowa, closing that gap. Uh, the RCP still has Biden a, a plus one. So it's essentially a, a, a wash. Uh, and, and she's still polling. You know, her opponent's still up four or five points in most polls. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah. And I, I just want to uh, play this, too, just so we can I'm Joni Ernst. relive the glory of uh what was it 2010 or whatever no 2000 2014 2014 yeah um when Joni Ernst this seems like a bit of a simpler simpler time to me for sure uh back when <laughs> Republicans were still talking about castrating pigs instead of building walls and shit I'm Joni Ernst I grew up castrating hogs on an Iowa farm so when I get to Washington I'll know how to cut pork <laughs> Ernst. Republican Joni Ernst says why and oddly enough she's not talking about killing the police <laughs> uh, yeah now that would have been a good I would be down with that angle I grew up castrating hogs so I'll take on the fucking police unions <laughs> that would be dope <laughs> yeah maybe she can come back in uh you know another six years as a leftist and went over some Iowa populist or something but yeah th that's definitely one race to look out for and uh you know if, if she loses I think that it's one of those states where uh, you know, if Republicans can't win in Iowa, then they really are fucked. You know, at least for now, they're going to have to come back, uh, you know, do another grand autopsy and reinvent their party as something that's hopefully uh, for them, for their sake, a little bit more palatable to the American people. Because basically what this is, is just, you know, continually dressing up their cruel uh, economic conservatism, which only benefits the corporations and never actually trickles down to the worker. Uh, you know, it's basically just dressing that up as, oh, well, we're more pro-America and we value life more and we're more patriotic and we care about the military. All this stupid scapegoating when at the end of the day, uh, you know, it's basically just, like I said, cruel economic conservatism that denies people and help money when they need it. And senators like Joni Ernst are nothing but uh, perpetrators of uh, that system. Not that the Democrats are pretty at all much better, but, you know, someone like Ernst just, just really does epitomize the the worst of the worst as far as GOP senators. And, and yeah, she is totally a leftover from kind of the Tea Party 
era. So she would, uh, I think she would definitely, uh, her loss would come as a, not necessarily a surprise, but I would welcome it for sure.